Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in this video, let me show you what I got going on today. Let's go. So today we're actually working on the van, the forgotten project. Well, some parts recently came in. So we really had, haven't had time to like check up on it or see what it needs or anything like that. So that's what I'm planning on doing today. Uh, we're gonna actually raise up the front end and there's, there has a couple of problems that I need to address. But first and foremost, I want to check, you know, the condition of stuff up front. Yeah, so once I lift up the van, I'll, you know, let you know what, what's pretty much what's wrong with it. Or the major problems with it. So let's go ahead and do that. So, quick tip when working on, like, these types of vans. You know how you usually uh, put the jack stands on the rails or the frame of the car? Let me show you what I did because I couldn't do it with this one. So, what I ended up doing is I put the jack stands here on the A-arms, on the front A-arms, as you can see over there. It's right there, this one's right here. Because, going, let me show you guys. These right here, that right there, that's the rail. And that is super high up. Like literally, if I try to jack, or, you know, put the jack stands from there, like the, the wheels touch the floor already. Like it's on the floor. So they're way too high up for me to put the jack stands there. And since I don't have those huge, um, tall jack stands, unfortunately, you know, I have to work with what I have, which means, you know, I have to pretty much, you know, have it up from the A-arms. This shouldn't affect anything. It's very solid. I, you know, do the jiggle test and all that stuff, jump on it and everything, and it's, it's solid. So just a little tip there. So now that we have the van raised up, the wheels are taken off now, as you can see. Now it's time to really go in and check out, check it out. Pretty much, let's we'll see what it's missing. So, first things first, and this is one of the biggest ones. This is the parts that uh, came in. Now that the wheels are off, we can really see everything. Like, so this, what is this? The tie rod end. The tie rod end is gone. This arm is gone. Pretty much, from what you can see at a glimpse, like this whole thing from tie rod, all these arms right here are pretty much gone. That thing connecting to the van, this other arm, they're pretty much toast. So we for sure need to replace all that because it does have, it does have some uh, driving issues, some steering issues. Okay, so now that we check pretty much from side to side the ball joints the bushings everything the brakes also so here's one of the major concerns with these with this van and the reason why we haven't driven it to be honest we haven't driven it as much as we would like and the reason is is because every time we drive it you know when you're driving you know it runs it, it runs whatever it needs to let it needs some work to the engine for sure when you when you start braking it pulls to the right like I'm not talking about, you know, like slowly. No, it just, it kind of wants to jerk on you to the right. Like, you know, as soon as you hit the brake, it, it just, it's crazy. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of crazy now thinking back on it, you know? But now that we actually, you know, checked up on the parts and the brakes and everything, I'm thinking um, we need, we for sure, we for sure need to replace the brakes on it the rotors and the pads bare minimum and i mean bare minimum but the parts that came in they're pretty much i ordered the whole steering linkages which is basically from this tie rod end to the other tie rod end over there on the other wheel which is right there over there at the tip of this screwdriver over there so basically this whole these all these pieces right here those are the parts that came in. Uh, hopefully the whole thing came in. I'm not missing any pieces. Cause it's one, it's like around 10 pieces in total, including that middle bar, which I'm pretty sure I didn't need. I could just use that one, but I might as well just throw everything in. So the dilemma now is, do I start with the linkages or do I start with the brakes? Just go ahead and start with the linkages since that's pretty much gonna be the, the most difficult part of it. You know, once we have that replaced, then we can go ahead and do the brakes and, you know, that way 
everything will be done it's gonna be a long one i've never done this before you're gonna have to learn with me along the way but we're for sure gonna give it the good old college try so basically i'm gonna try to pretty much pull everything that's on there installed now as you know in one piece or try to at least since i'm replacing everything and one thing connects to another so i'm thinking if i can disconnect it from the mounting points on the vehicle or on the van on the van that way you know i can just pull the whole thing out as one you know one whole assembly then from there you know pretty much try to piece everything together get some measurements or something for for the alignment not to be so far off but that way that at least that's the plan so hopefully it goes through you know the way i'm thinking and um, with that you know let's go ahead and see how it goes so first of all if we're gonna go ahead and take everything in one piece we're gonna go ahead and take these little cotter pins out so we can go ahead and bust this nut so we can try to get this tie rod and loose now it's time to take off this nut right here for the tie rod end and the size of this is uh, 15 16. So, now that we have our big ass hammer, we're pretty much just gonna go to town on it. So, let's go ahead and do the other side. Since that point is now loose, I'm ready to take off. So now that we took off the tie rod right on over there that's loose, let's go ahead and jump back to the passenger side. So this tie rod in. So, from the looks of it, since we are trying to disconnect it from where it's connected to the car or the van in this case we're seeing that the tie rod is obviously connected to the brakes over here to the hub on both sides but it is also connected to this arm right here and this is connected to that which is connected to the frame rail so that's another connecting point right there which means we have to take this nut off also so we're gonna have to do that right now but also you know, going along with the steering linkages here, there is another arm, as you can see right there. So, if we don't have to, we're not gonna disconnect it from there, but we are gonna have to disconnect it from on top. Same as with uh, the tire rod in, it has a cotter pin, as you can see, in that castle nut. So we're gonna do the exact same thing to remove it as we did with the tire rod end. All right, all right. So, finally, after, oh things dying anyway after a long arduous battle literally took half an hour almost to loosen this nut up nut out now it's loose now it's basically time to smack it somehow from here or here again so we can take this arm or like this that that's sticking out through the this metal so you can we're pretty much just taking this off I also got a little ahead of myself. I forgot to record it. But this arm is now loose. Well, not loose, but. Uh, let me reposition myself here. There you go. So, this arm right here has a big nut right there. Which, I, it, was, it wasn't too tight, per se. But it was just, it's one of those big ones. So I just got an adjustable wrench since I don't have a big a crescent wrench, or, you know, for that one. So after struggling and struggling with the pitman arm, no, the idler arm, you got that right. This one's the idler arm. The other side is a pitman arm. So after struggling, you know, trying to bash this in, there's no space right there to bash it in. So I just decided to take it with loosening up the, the bracket over there see the bolts over there these two bolts that way you know once i have everything off i can go ahead and you know lose, uh, take this or separate this from the idler arm here but with that now we're over here at the driver's side and these are now loose there you go lock washer and nut is off so we got the pitman arm out which is right here but in order to do that we have to loosen up the the one of the bumper brackets which is the driver's side here 
as you can see the bolt hole right there so we had to loosen it up get it out of the way from ghost bolts it up right there and a little dandy pitman arm remover we did the job it wasn't too bad it was just dirty so now now that we have that out we loosened up the actually got the tie rod ends out on both sides which means that finally everything's gonna come out in one piece just as i had planned thankfully all right so here it is all in one piece tie rod end sleeve inner tie rod idle arm or bracket the center rod right here pitman arm inner tie rod sleeve and outer tie rod so now that we have it all out get it out in front of us now we have to basically get the center rod out pretty much you know take the any, anything that's connected to, to the center rod and take this bracket off from the uh, idler arm that way we can pretty much put everything together with new parts uh, we also have to measure pretty much our length of the tie rods that way we can set the other ones up the same distance and all that stuff so we'll probably do that first to be honest before we take everything apart to start doing that since we have this out i decided to go ahead and assemble the tie rods outer inner sleeve outer inner sleeve so got I pretty much measured it from oh well, let me show you actually so what I basically did is just pretty much measured the center of the inner tie rod to the sleeve where the tip of the sleeve right here and pretty much copy that over here and same goes over here for the outer tie rod same thing measure it from the middle of the tie rod end to the tip of uh, the sleeve right here and again just transfer the measurements back over here tighten these up and you should be good to go same on, on the other side so now that we have these uh two outer extremities assembled now it's time to take this apart so we can go ahead and either bolt this bolt this back up to the to the chassis and give the little the center rod a good cleaning because it's really gunked up that way just like we did you know coming up in one piece i'm hoping you know assemble everything outside so that way we just throw it all in in one piece again and pretty much go from there so after god probably half hour maybe more i finally got the idler arm off of the idler arm bracket which is which goes to the passenger side, the part of the chassis. Finally, it was such a pain in the butt, but thankfully, Little Harbor Freight Micro Torch came in clutch with, you know, WD-40, lighting it up, smacking it with a big hammer and a, uh, that bar right there. Now that we got that free, now the rest should be easier. Taking off the tie rods right here, and this side and the pitman arm. And that's about it, that way. We'll just put it back all together with new parts. Success! Finally, the center link is free. We got that the stubborn little thing out. We got the pitman arm. It's pretty simple. Where's the tool? Where's that tool? That tie rod end slash pitman arm mover thing came in clutch for sure. That one made short work out of everything. Except for the idler arm, because there was no gap for that. But other than that, it's now time to clean this send link up. Well, as clean as possible, so we can go ahead and throw it back on. Saving time, my pops just wants to throw it in. I wiped it down a little bit, it's not that bad. Let's go ahead and set it up. It is now assembled, ready to throw back in. But first, we're gonna grease every single joint, every ball joint grease everything up i'm actually before we throw this on i'm gonna throw in the bracket first just so we can have it in place that way we can just slide it in the idler arm bracket is in the arm is in the tie rods 
both sides are in. The only thing missing is that nut right there for the pitman arm. We don't have the correct size socket or wrench for it, so tomorrow we'll pick it up. So back the next day, finally got our tool and it's this one it's the one in 5 16 socket for that particular nut i had thought it was gonna be like a 32 but it turns out it was a one in 5 16 and it fits perfectly so now it's just time to torque it down and go from there let's continue so everything is now connected torqued down with the cutter pins in which is this point right here where is it this tie rod on driver's side. Right there, you can see the cutter pin. Cutter pin right there for the pitman arm. Cutter pin for the inner on this side. The idler arm in the bottom, on the top. And lastly, that passenger side tie rod end. And with that, we're done for today. Finally, job done. I don't know what's going on, but there's a lot of ash coming from that side. Like it's raining down ash. As you can see right here, big ass pieces of ash. I don't know what's burning in the house, the school. There's ash everywhere. And there you go. That's how you replace all of the steering linkages pretty much from wheel to wheel. Literally. Literally. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, you know, I, I definitely learned something today. Hopefully you guys did as well. So make sure to smash that like button subscribe for future content comment down below if hey if you have any suggestions or i might have skipped something or messed something up you let me know follow us on instagram at los Marleras. that being said see you guys next time peace